coffee with Chloe in the morning. And I actually have coffee today. Look at that. So, my name is Chloe. That is my coffee. And it is actually the morning. It's like 9 a.m. So, we're doing pretty good this week. Um, I am co-founder of the Marma J Foundation. And generally, I try and go live Monday to Friday in the mornings if I can. And I try and go through various near protocol blockchain projects, events. Um, and I try and just, you know, experience it for myself, of course. But then, you know, trying to share more information with the Marma J community if possible. Trying to get more people involved with what we're doing. And so this here is Steak Wars. Episode three, a new validator. So basically, chunk producer validators um, are coming to Near, and there's lots of information on this web page about it. So near.org/stakewars, and you can kind of get all the information. But from a high level, chunk only producers are introduced by reaching sharding phase one, and bring a more. <laughs> wallet because of security issues with people malicious by accident maybe right taking a bunch of near tokens and then causing issues so the team was like okay you know what we got to stop this and we're gonna find a way to fix it later so to fix it one of the ways is first of all you make sure your machines up to date um, my machine is up to date so we're not gonna go through all that yet but that's the command there you make sure you have node.js npm and you can check this for me by going to my version. So, oops. Okay, node version 16. That actually is not. Oh, because specifically for this, it wants 18. So you should do what it says and write, and you can use your node version manager to change it to 18 something. But when you go to and node long-term support. The, the most recent long-term support version is actually 16.16. 16. Um, and so for me, just doing dev stuff on my own at home, like just for fun, I use version 16. Um, but specifically, sorry, for stake wars, um, I would definitely suggest switching it. So you could be like, I don't know how to change your node version. I mean, you could just Google it, right? So, uh, NVM change node version. And then you just pick your version. It's like, yeah. So there you go. NVM use 18. And then if I wanted to know which node worked with 18, I would just be like, node 18. Just be like, Node.js 18 is available. Maybe I can just eight, say 18, it'll give me like the, the newest 18, I think. So if I was doing this, right, I don't want to use an old version like that. I think I'm gonna say use 18. And then I think NVM use 18 will use the newest like, law, like supported version of. No. Ugh. Uh, install all these things, install Python 3 pip. I think we have that one, that's the whole point. Uh, it's going to set the configuration, user base bin, Python, okay, so got Python stuff. Uh, I think we already did this, but I just, I always feel like I might miss some things and with this type of stuff, like with my path and the bin and all that, way above my head. Path systems in like file systems and all that, I try for hours and hours to get it from my brain. I just go, okay, I'll double check. <laughs> Okay, so you install, so this is the part that takes quite a while actually. So I'm gonna come here for a bit. So installing Rust and Cargo does take quite a while. Um, you know, you press one, you hit enter, you source the environment, again, more environment stuff and whatever, just get follow the instructions, pretty straightforward. You're gonna clone near core. Again, this part is all step-by-step, -step, really self-explanatory. You clone, you know, get clone, you're cloning a file from the internet into your local computer. Uh, CD near core, you are going into that f f file uh, that you just downloaded. Uh, git fetch, uh, I'm pretty sure just updates 
the folder whatever new contents might be online so you know if you've waited a week um, there might be new files online that have been updated that your computer doesn't know about so git fetch just make sure you get those new files and then git checkout um, I'm pretty sure I think the fetch makes sure you know what's available and then checkout actually lets you download it and like sets because you could have like multiple different branches of uh, the, the, the file like multiple different so you could have the main you'd have testing you could have developer branch and so maybe you want to check out the de developer branch for a bit or check out the main branch for a bit and so you can be developing or using multiple different types of, of software with the same one file that's being downloaded off the internet hope that makes a little bit of sense I'm not a professional on github at all but that's my understanding then you're gonna compile the near core binary. So basically you took all this information off the internet, you made sure it was up to date, you made sure you checked out the correct branch, so maybe you wanted to do testing branch or the shardnet branch, right? Because near core is for mainnet, testnet, beta net, guildnet, and shardnet. And so you check out specifically the shardnet branch. And so you're also gonna build the feet, you know, release features for shardnet, right? It's all kind of right there. And this will take a while. Okay, and it does say, you know, compiling the near core binary might take a while. It does take quite a bit. And so let's see what we got here. Or, you know, clear uh, LS CD. Let's go through. Challenge number three you get 10 near points for deploying a new staking pool for your validator and do operations on your staking pool to delegate and stake near. So basically, you get 30 unlocked points just for opening your staking pool contract and, and setting up the node and syncing it and all that. And then if you actually end up delegating some near, so for example, here at the Marma J uh, node, you can just four people have delegated. So yes, I delegated. Most people you'll see have at least one. They delegate to themselves, right? 2,000 near was delegated. At first it's zero, when you, or thir well, it's 30, I guess. Sorry, it's zero when you make the contract. It takes 30 near to make the contract. But after, right, you've made this, you can get other people to delegate to you and add more and more near to your staking pool. And so what it's saying is you can get 10 unlocked near points for delegating to your staking pool and then actually getting a, so as you can see here, you have to have at least 30 near available to make your staking pool. pool. You can choose your own fees, right? In the example, it's 1%. The Marma J pool is at 8%. 8.19, other pools are at 5% or other amounts. And that's pretty much all that one is. Now checking on your node. Okay, so you get 15 unlocks. You get 15 unlock state points. Okay, but oops, this is probably what we're missing, right? So this is actually challenge number four that I didn't do, or I get, we have, we have monitoring on port 330, but we can't access the RPC on port 33. So I'm, I'm actually gonna go through this a bit, a bit deeper to show here at least how it would have worked to access our, our, our node. And maybe we'll even try and do it since we actually know how to and everything now. Okay, so we know how to monitor stuff, that's fine. We know we'll get some logs. Okay, that's awesome. Actually, let me, okay. RPC, any node within the network offers RPC on port 3030, as long as it's open in the node's firewall. I think port 3030 is open in the firewall. I will have to check later, but anyways. The near CLI uses RPC calls behind the scene. Uh, the common use case, check on validator stat, node version, and C delegator stake. Oh, my firewall must be closed then because outgoing must be available, but incoming must be closed. And so the benefit was what I, I, I can open port 3030 for incoming requests 
only from this specific computer, like this specific laptop, for example. And that would allow me to have more security in that sense. So, blah, blah, blah. This is interesting. Check. Running. So this blog, oh, this live stream was meant to be an article but running locally. Um, but, you know, so acceptance career criteria, document the process and publish it. So I'm documenting it here on video and it will be published on YouTube. Include a step-by-step -step instruction on how to mount a node validator using state wars instructions. So we did that here. Uh, and we're trying to do it along the same time here as well. So as long as we get through challenge four, uh, I guess it counts. Although technically in this video, we didn't actually set up the staking pool, which we could do, but there's no RPC open, so we cannot. Um, and then included detailed screenshots and description of the process. In my opinion, when you're doing a video, the beautiful thing is you always have screenshots and I talk way too much. So I think I give more than enough descriptions. Uh, include pricing for running the validator. Uh, it's very expensive on a virtual machine. You can get cheaper virtual machines for about a hundred bucks a month. I also think it's easier to run a, hard, a local hardware setup. Um, a backup for internet is gonna cost at least 150 bucks a month, uh, which is more than a VM. Uh, internet on its own is gonna cost you a hundred bucks a month, which is again, same amount as a cheap VM, but you need it, you need it at your house anyways. Um, so you generally you're already looking at more than a VM just for super fast internet and a backup. But I mean, as long as you have really fast internet, your machine's going to probably set you back around a thousand bucks US. Um, and then once you have your machine, it should, it should run uh, a node for a few years at least. And you can kind of make changes to your, to your node as you see fit. So uh, pricing, in my opinion, uh, it's about 1500 bucks a month to $2,000, I mean, sorry, a year. Like $600 a year, $200 a year on average if you're doing a VM. And if you're doing a hardware setup at home, you're probably looking at, you know, a thousand bucks a year in internet costs um, and then like a thousand bucks upfront costs. Um, so it ends up being the same over the first year, but then obviously in year two, three, four, you still have your machine. Um, whereas with VM, you're just paying forever. But for stake wars, obviously. <laughs> Every 12 hours or every epoch, your node needs to be pinged. I don't know why it's telling me to ping it every five minutes. It doesn't make sense to me. But you can do a ping through Croncat, which is super cool. And so you get 15 near for pinging, but you can actually just log in here to Shardnet. They make it really easy. Again, there's obviously an error happening right now with the RPC being out, but you just, oh, is it really just not working at all? Oh, I guess that makes sense. So anyways, when you are able to log in, um, you'll be able to ask Croncat, a decentralized Cron service, to ping your node at whatever interval. And so that's what we do with our Shardnet nodes. Also on mainnet, that's what we used to do. Um, and yeah, there's other challenges as well. Um, so let's see, there's challenge number Seven's the last one, and that one's asking you to do data science for staking, like bring some new. So judging criteria, clear and meaningful goal, being able to correctly and effectively grade data from the indexer, RPC node, transform, transform and aggregate data in the form of a final result, and straightforward data dashboard. And so you can earn up to, oh, 20 delegated near points. That's not cool. Uh, anyways, Ally Near is saying that they'll give you up to 20 delegated near points if you start doing some data science stuff for chunk producers on Near. And then if you go to the eighth challenge, you can earn 50 unlocked Near. Near and 30 delegated Near if you run a new smart contract on your account, so on the account right here, 
marmajay.shardnet.near currently has no smart contract on it. It has deployed a smart contract, the staking pool, but it has no smart contract on the actual uh, individually owned account. And so if you do run a smart contract here that allows you to um, distribute tokens to multiple places, I don't really know. Uh, I have to read it a little more, but basically withdraw is successfully distributed to accounts and in case a bug is found, detail your feedback. So basically, you're kind of having fun on chain, enjoying yourself with a community, building your research team, and then doing on chain challenges to win, to win, you know, near tokens. It's pretty fun for me. So hopefully this video has been helpful. I've been streaming for an hour about uh, stake wars. I mean, honestly, this should give a pretty good overview of like what it is how to get started. Um, oh shoot, I, I, before I end the video, I do wanna go through these last few steps and start building and, and just seeing if we can uh, get it going. So I'm pretty sure the next step is just to run the node. Pretty sure. It's